Okay, simplifying expressions. So with expressions, remember that you cannot solve for the variable because there is no equal sign in an expression. And so what we're going to be doing is we don't solve expressions, we solve equations. We simplify expressions. And today is we're, we're going to talk about how we do that exactly. In our answers today, we're still going to have variables or letters left over. That is okay. Okay? Our answer is not always just going to be one number. Um, so remember that and, and make sure you got in your head, it's okay to have a letter still in my answer. All right? So let's go ahead and look at the vocab words uh, first of all. So vocab words, like terms, constants, and simplest form. Pause the video real quick, go ahead and get these down. All right, so like terms, we talked about those actually um, last week, I believe. Uh, and those are terms that have the same variables to the same powers. So I wanna show you one thing with uh, like terms. So like terms, they have the same variables. So uh, 2x and 5x, those are like terms. One thing that is not a like term 2x squared and 5x. Okay, because this is x squared. This is 2 times x times x. This is just 5x. So they must have the same powers, the same exponents, and the same variable. If we made this 5x squared, then they would be like terms. Okay, so they must have the same variable, the same letter and the same powers or the same exponents. So that's important to remember. x squared is not the same thing as x. x to the third power is different than x to the second power. So the same exponents and the same variables. A constant. In math, we've said, we've talked about the word constant, like constant rate of change. That's the same. If it's a constant in an expression, it is a term without a variable. In other words, it is just a number. So a constant is just a number. It does not have a variable with it. All right, and then our goal is to get these expressions in simplest form. Simplest form is when an expression has no like terms and no more parentheses. So simplest form, when an expression has no more like terms and it has no more parentheses. Okay, so that's going to be our goal. So the first type of example that we're going to be doing is just identify all the different things that we can see in an expression. So it says identify the terms, like terms, coefficients, and constants. Remember, the coefficients are the numbers in front of the variable. Coefficient is the number in front of the variable. So let's first of all say, what are all the terms in this expression? Well, the terms, they are each separate piece of the expression. So one term is 6n. And this expression, if you see it, it's got four different terms. There are four different pieces of that expression. So the next term is actually not 7n. One important thing that I want to point out is whenever we start talking about simplifying expressions, you need to include the, the sign that comes before this term. So this is not 7n, it's negative 7n. Negative 7n, okay? That's the next term. So then our next term is not 4, it's negative 4. And then if it's plus n, it's just a positive n, so we can just write it as n. So there are four terms, 6n, negative 7n, negative 4, and n. Okay, so hopefully you, that makes sense. You, if there's a minus in front of it, that minus sign goes along with the term after that. So minus 7n, minus 4. That's what we write down here. All right, so then our like terms. Remember, like terms have the same variable to the same power or the same exponent. There are three like terms in this expression. We've got n, n, n. So 6n, negative 7n, and n. 
Those are all like terms because they all have an n in common and that n has no exponent, so they all are to the same exponent as well. All right, so the coefficients. Remember, coefficients are the number in front of the variable. Coefficients are the number in front of the variable. So we've got three different terms that have variables, 6n, negative 7n, and n. So the coefficients would be the number in front of those, 6, and then it's not 7, it's negative 7. And then we've just got n, but there is a coefficient in front of n. If it's just n, how many n's are there? There's just one. So the coefficient, anytime you've got just the variable itself, there is a coefficient, there's a number in front of it technically, and that number is one. So that one is in front of n. You could write this as one n, but that's kind of like saying two over one is the same thing as two. We just write two, we don't write two over one. Same thing here. We're not gonna write one n, it's just gonna be n, okay? So then last thing is the constants. And the constants, remember, are the numbers that don't have a variable. There's only one, looking at these terms, negative four. That's the only constant there. So those are our terms, like terms, coefficients, and constants. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do this one more time. So if you feel like you had a hang of it, go ahead and pause it and do this on your own. Okay. So let's look at the terms of this expression. Once again, there are four different pieces. The terms are the different pieces that make up that expression. So our terms, we have 3x, we have positive 2, we have minus 10, so keep that minus with the 10, and then we also have minus 3x. So those are our four terms. So what are the like terms? So there are two sets of like terms, okay? One of those sets would be the 3x and the minus 3x. They both have an x in common, so those are like terms. So my next question is, 2 and minus 10, do they have a variable? Well, no, they don't. They don't have a variable, which means if they don't have a variable, they have the same variable. They just don't have anything. And so if you have multiple numbers that don't have any letters, any variables with them, those are actually like terms as well. Okay, so 2 and negative 10, that's our other set of like terms. So we have two sets of like terms. The x terms, 3x and minus 3x, but then also 2 and minus 10. Okay, so let's look at the coefficients. Remember that coefficients are the numbers in front of the variables. We've got three in front of the x, and we've got negative three. So those are our two coefficients. And then the last thing that we've got to say, what are the constants? Remember, constants in an expression are terms without variables. There's two of them, two and negative 10. So one thing that you can use to check if you have more than one constant, those would all be like terms when you write down the like terms. So if there's more than one constant, those are gonna be like terms as well. All right, so those are just kind of picking apart the different pieces of an expression. So when we simplify expressions, okay, we're gonna be using properties of operations so because we can reorder the expressions. That's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be reordering these expressions um, to simplify them. By simplifying expressions, we are not changing the expression. Nothing is changing. All we are doing is rewriting that expression. It is an equivalent expression, which means we're just rewriting the expression in a different way. Remember equivalent fractions? They still have the same value. They're just written different ways. That's what equivalent expressions are as well. If your expression has no more like terms and it has no more parentheses, and we say it's in simplest form. Okay, so that those are things to remember as we simplify these different expressions. Okay, so now these first two expressions, I'm actually going to skip this first one. 
if we were actually in class, we would take the time to talk about this, but um, I don't think we need to. I do want to look at something on this second one. So let's look at the parentheses 7 times x times 3x. Okay, so the first thing that we would do, we're not going to justify our steps. I just want to show you one thing here. The first thing we would probably do is inside the parentheses, 7 times x, we just rewrite that as 7x times 3x. Hey, any time that we are multiplying, if we are multiplying a number times a variable, like 7 times x, we can multiply the numbers. So what we would do is 7 times 3, which is 21. And then we have x times x. 21, 7 times 3, and then x times x. So x times x is not 2x x plus x is 2x, but not x times x. Let me ask you this. What is 5 times 5? It's 25, but how would we write that? 5 times 5 is 5 squared, or 5 to the second power. 3 times 3 is 3 to the second power, which means x times x is not 2x, it is x squared, or x to the second power. And so coming over here, 7x times 3x would be 7 times 3, which is 21, and then x times x is x squared. So this would be 21x squared. The main thing that I want you all to remember is this. A variable times itself is x squared. x plus x that's 1x plus 1x, that equals 2x. But x times x is x squared, so remember that, okay? Now let's look at writing these expressions in simplest form. So the, what we're going to do first is you're going to put the same shape around like terms. So the way that I teach simplifying expressions, it might be a little different from what other teachers teach, um, but I think this is the easiest way to simplify these expressions. We're going to put the same shape around like terms. So we have 4y plus 16 minus y. Okay. So I'm going to put, let's say I put 4y and I circle that. Well, what's a like term with 4y? Well, it would be this y right here. So another important thing is include, include the sign or the operation in front of each term. Okay, so that's another thing. Include the operation in front of each term. So that means I'm not just going to circle the y, I'm going to circle the minus y. I'm going to show you why we do that here in a second. So I've put a circle around these two like terms because I know that they go together. Well, the plus 16 is not a like term with these two. It does not have a y in common. So we'll put a box around the plus 16. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down here now, and I'm going to write everything that is circled on one side. I'm going to separate it and write everything that is boxed on the other side. So I have a 4y and a minus y. So 4y is circled and minus y is also circled. The reason why we include the operation there is that tells us that we're going to have to subtract these two. So we include this minus in the circle because that tells us we subtract. Then I'm going to come over here to my boxes and I only have a plus 16 box. Okay? And then I do everything on both sides. So 4y, you take away 1y, I have left 3y, and then nothing has to change from this plus 16, so it's 3y plus 16. Are there any more like terms? Well, 3y is not the same as 16, so no. Are there any parentheses? There aren't either, so that tells me 
I am finished. Okay, so we're putting the same shape around like terms, include the operation in our shape, and then drop down here and write everything in the same shape and then simplify each side. So let's look at our second example. All right, so let's go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna circle 7x, so what else do I need to circle? Circle this minus 7x, okay? Then we've got a two and a six. Well, those are like terms as well. They're both constants, they don't have a variable. So we're gonna put a box around the minus two, and we're gonna put a box around the plus six. So then we've got our circles here, we've got our boxes here. So 7x and minus 7x are circled, and then minus two and plus six, that's circled. So treat both sides as a different problem, and then at the very end, we'll come and put them together. 7x minus 7x, if I subtract the same thing, what do I end up with? I end up with zero. If I have 7x's and I take away 7x's, I'm left with, 0 or 0x. Zero and if I have 0x, we can just forget about that. So we can even forget about the 0x's are there. And then I come over to this side. Negative 2 plus 6. Negative 2 plus 6 would give me positive 4. Since it's positive 4, I'll put a plus sign right there. So we have 0x plus 4. Since it's a 0x, we don't have any x's left over. All I can do is just say my final answer is 4. So you don't have to have a variable in your answer um, because they cancel out. We subtract both of them, so the x's are gone. I had 7x's. I took away 7x's. I don't have any x's left over. All right, so that one you end up with 4. All right, so pause the video. I want you all to do this last one on your own and see what you get. First thing that we need to do here, put the same like terms in the same shape. So we're going to circle a 2g. We also need to circle this minus 8g. And then we'll put a box around the minus 3 and the plus 11 because those are both constants, so those are like terms. All right, so then we drop down and we say our circles are right here, 2g and minus 8g. And then we've got our boxes, which would be minus 3 and plus 11. Okay, so 2g minus 8g, just do 2 minus 8. 2 minus 8 is negative 6. So I'm left with negative 6g on that side. And then negative 3 plus 11 is positive 8. So if I end up with a positive answer, that's going to be a plus sign in between there. Are these two like terms? They're not like terms, so we can't add them together. There's no parentheses left, so that means this is in simplest form. All right, so just to recap, like terms have the same variable to the same exponent. So we put the, the like terms in the same shape. We drop down, we write all of a one shape beside each other, all of the other shape next to each other. We do both sides separately. We come down and we finish by writing our final answer. All right, so go ahead and try to practice problems and hopefully you all can get these pretty easily. One last thing is don't worry about this page, just do pages 391 and 392.